Curiosity-driven note-taking is one of the most effective ways to find unexpected insights and to grow in a wide range of topics. And yet it's so easy to dismiss our desire to learn and grow in the name of sticking to the plan or not having time. But what if you could weave this practice into your day? What, what if you allowed your mind to go off-roading just for a little bit to chase the idea. Recently, I was out for my morning walk and I spotted a hot air balloon in the sky. It was a picture-worthy moment. A giant colorful ball against the backdrop of a clear blue sky. Now, I normally would have kept walking, but I had a thought bubble up. How does a hot air balloon fly? Like, how does it navigate in the air? You see, the, the wind blows in different directions at different altitudes. So when the pilot wants to change direction, they need to ascend or descend to an appropriate level and then ride with the wind. The balloon is, is letting go of control and allowing something else to steer it. I let that thought simmer for a little bit and I realized oftentimes for me, inspiring thoughts and learning opportunities are found when I ride with the wind. In personal knowledge management, to ride with the wind means to allow curiosity to steer your heart and your mind. Curiosity leads to learning and insight, which leads to more connections, which leads to innovation, new ideas for all domains of your life. Now, this requires an awareness of, of the strong desires that you have, the, the pull to know something. And it requires the willingness to allow yourself just to let go and ride with the wind. Oftentimes, I'll plan on thinking through an idea on one of my walks in the morning, but along the way, something else will catch my curiosity and I've learned to just simply follow it. Follow it and not fight it. You see, I'm not, I'm not afraid that I'll lose the time that I was gonna spend on the other idea. In fact, oftentimes, I'll actually get a new perspective on the idea that I had planned to think about when I follow that trail, when I follow the thought or the idea that comes to me, the thing that I want to know more about, the thing that piques my interest. And if it doesn't have anything to do with the idea, I still win because my mind is then freed up to think about the idea that I had originally planned on thinking about because I followed my curiosity. If this has been helpful and interesting for you so far, I think you'll really enjoy my free guide on how to take book notes. This is a, a short PDF guide on how to extract the insights from nonfiction books, specifically with physical books, and get those into your personal knowledge management system, all without using Readwise. By the end of the guide, you'll have a simple system for highlighting books, a mindful approach for adding content to your second brain, a process for creating building blocks of knowledge for the future, and then a simple way to make more connections inside of your second brain. The link to the guide is in the description below if you want to check that out. In my experience, I found that curiosity peaks its head up in certain environments and in certain moments. And I call these curiosity hotspots. Now you want to identify your curiosity hotspots because those are the places or, or even the people that when you interact with them, when you are around them, when you are inside of the place, whatever it is, uh, you, your noticing senses are heightened. It's where you'll find the most fruit. Now for me, this looks like walking in nature. Every morning I take a walk on the trail in my neighborhood, but it's a beautiful walk for me with a bunch of trees and a bunch of, and there's a creek and all that. So I love walking in nature. It is my top curiosity hotspot. The other thing for me is slowing down, literally slowing down, doing uh, driving slower, walking slower, doing the dishes slower. Like you, you cannot notice beauty when you're driving 100 miles an hour, when you're going so fast. You don't catch things, you don't notice things. So slow down is one of those things for me. Another one is reading a physical book. Getting off the screens, getting off of Kindles, all that. I just, I just want the paper. I want the experience of a physical book. And finally, having a great conversation around a topic where both parties are nerding out about the topic. Now to get practical, I wanted to show you the flow of how riding with the wind worked for this 
very video that you're wa that you're watching right now. This is uh, started out as a note. Okay, it started out as as a, as a thought that I had followed. So here's how it went. I was walking in nature, and again, this is my curiosity hotspot for me. Uh, now this this allowed me being in this curiosity hotspot allowed me to notice the hot air balloon. It wasn't just something that I saw in the sky and then and said, oh, that's cool. Let me keep going on. It allowed me to notice it. And then I had a thought that occurred. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes when I get thoughts, I dismiss them. But oftentimes the thoughts that come up in my head like that in my curiosity hotspots are things that I actually should look into. Things that I should just go off-roading for a little bit, see where it takes me. So don't dismiss those thoughts when you're in your curiosity hotspot. All right, so I had the thought that occurred, and then I chased the thought. I went after the rabbit that I had found. Well, what does it mean to chase the thought? For me, it, mean liter it meant literally looking up how a balloon, a hot air balloon, is steered in the sky. I just Googled it and was looking at it. Now, this added knowledge for me. As I was reading about it, as I, as I gained the knowledge, I saw the connection in my second brain and, and how personal knowledge management and taking notes is, is exactly, for me, um, related to how a hot air balloon is steered in the sky by riding with the wind. With me is following my curiosity. Now, as I wrote down and copied and, and got all the information about the hot air balloon and I started making connections, I let it sit for a few days and let it, what I call, simmer on low heat, allowing the, the different ingredients to blend together and to be refined. And I started thinking more about it further into it, thinking, how, how actually does this connect? Um, and that led to the thoughts and ideas that I'm sharing with you today. All of this can be distilled down to a, a four-step process that I follow, which is collect, connect, shape, and share. So my question for you today is how are you going to ride with the wind? Are you willing to surrender your plans and your agenda and chase the thought or idea that comes to you? It may be random, my friend. It may be completely out of nowhere, left field, but just try it. See if it takes you somewhere. And I'd love to hear from you as well. If you have curiosity hotspots, comment down below with your top three hotspots. I'll see you next time.